everyone, this is Rachelle. Thanks for clicking on my video. And I came in today to weigh in on these officer-involved shootings. You know, the ones where the victim is murdered and the officer gets off. Well, you know, just recently, the officer that murdered Terrence Crutcher has also been acquitted of all charges. She's not only been acquitted, but she is back out on the streets protecting and serving the hell out of the community that she's in. Now, before I go into my video, let me just say right off, and this is for the people that are going to come down in my comments, you know, those ones that we call trolls, and talk about black on black crime. The difference between an officer involved shooting and black on black crime is this when a black person kills another black person 99.9% .9 of the time their asses are going to jail you heard what I said they go to jail okay but when an officer murders a black man all he has to say is what is it y'all I feared for my life and of course they get off now let me just throw some names at you and this is by no means a full accounting of all the black people that have been murdered by the police and the officer that did the killing get off Sandra Bland Walter Scott Freddie Gray Tyree King he hails from the city that I come from, Columbus, Ohio, 13-year-old boy. Michael Brown, Dontre Hamilton, Eric Gardner, John Crawford, Ezel Four, and Tamir Rice out of Cleveland, the little 12-year-old boy that was shot by the police. You know, they arrived on the scene. Tamir was standing in that gazebo, and they shot him within like three seconds of arriving. Now, y'all, at some point, I had stopped watching, you know, the coverage when a black man or a young black guy was killed because I couldn't take it anymore, you know? These are my brothers, my sisters, who the police are out there murdering. Now, once again, I'm going to go back to those trolls. You know, they'll say, um, you know, something like this, y'all. Well, why don't you raise your children right? Why don't you teach them right from wrong? You know, it doesn't even matter how we raise our kids. Hell, they're, they're killing college kids, you know? It could be the damn president of the United States. You remember Barack Obama? They wanted to kill him, too. It doesn't matter what we do. This is the situation here in America, you know, land of the free, home of the brave. This is what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, I mentioned that there were thousands of others who have been murdered by the police who go unnamed because their story didn't make it to the mainstream media. Everyone out there who's black Think about the person in your city that you know that was murdered by the police and there was some question behind that killing. And then you later on hear that the police officer has gotten away with, with it. Y'all, it doesn't matter if they're cameras. It doesn't matter because like my grandfather used to say, the police officer could be standing there with a smoking gun and, um, you know, they will say, I feared for my life. They will have a body cam on and it will clearly show that maybe the person was running away or they were not resisting arrest. Like Philando Castile, who was in the car and they told him to get out his ID and he went to reach for it and that officer shot the shit out of him, you know? So my question is, what do we tell our sons? Now, let me just tell y'all something yesterday. My baby was over here. And I say baby, but he's 30 years old. 
And, um, you know, I told him about uh, Mr. Terrence Crutcher, you know, the officer got off. And I just looked at him sitting there and I told him, you know what, baby, I don't even know what to tell you anymore. You know, we tell our sons to be polite and put their hands on the steering wheel and, you know, be courteous to the officer. That doesn't matter. They will still shoot the shit out of them. So my question is then, what do we tell them? What the hell do we tell them? As I was sitting last night watching my baby, just sitting there listening to him talk and, you know, just taking him in, trying to look at him objectively, not like I'm his mom, but, you know, like he's what they consider him out in the street, young black male. And I said to the outside world, this young man is sitting here rocking in my rocking chair, laughing and talking is considered public enemy number one. My son has no no police contact, you know, other than, you know, traffic stops, but he's not a thug, he's not a criminal, he's never been in jail, you know, all the whole nine. Same with my nephews, you know, and I and I even want to talk about my nephew. My nephew told me a story one time. And my nephew is uh, 28 years old. He has never been stopped by the police okay but there was this one time the police pulled him over okay and um, my nephew has nothing um no no traffic court no nothing he doesn't smoke he doesn't drink anything he has tattoos from his neck to his wrist on one side of his body good young man family man has three children take care of him, is with the baby mother, the whole thing. He loves her, you know? So the police officer pulled my nephew over. My nephew said um, he believes it was for his back headlight, uh, back light. It was out. So, of course, you know, when the police officer pulled him over, he wanted to run, you know, his name. So uh, my nephew said, uh, I felt comfortable, auntie. You know, I don't have anything. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I've never had a drink in my life. And he's 28 years old. Okay. So the officer comes back to the car. And of course, he didn't find anything because my nephew has nothing, not even a parking ticket. Okay. So, you know, the officer probably didn't want to let it go. So, he asked my nephew to get out the car. He wanted to search the car because he just couldn't believe this young black man couldn't have anything on him. Now in the back seat is two baby chairs because my nephew has two little boys that are both in, you know, the little baby car seats. Okay. Officer searches the car, you know, has my nephew handcuffed sitting on the curb. He searches the car, nothing. You know, bottle of juice in the back seat, <laughs> you know, baby bottle. So he, un you know, handcuffs my nephew, my nephew gets back in the car. And so, you know, he tells my nephew, go on, you know, my nephew said he was very mean to him and, you know, just couldn't believe that this young black man could not have anything, you know, anything. And before he sent my nephew on his way, he went back and told my nephew he wanted to search one more thing before he pulled off. My nephew said he sat back there, the police officer, for about five minutes, I guess, doing some type of nationwide search, making sure that, you know, he wasn't wanted in any other, you know, state or anything. Of course, my nephew has only lived in Ohio, so wouldn't, it wasn't going to be anything out there. So he comes back to the car again, and that's when he tells my nephew, oh, okay, just drive off. You see the, the thought process of these officers? You know, they automatically assume that um, they're, they're, these black young men and black men are up to no good, that they're criminals, that, you know, they couldn't possibly make it to 30 years old or so and not to have any priors, as they call it. So, y'all, that's the state of where we are. Nothing's going to change. You know, I hate to sound so cynical, but um, nothing's going to change. I don't even know what to tell you to do for your sons. 
your daughters. I really don't even know what to tell you. Because nothing that is being done here lately is stopping them from murdering our children. You know, unarmed people. Okay? Nothing. Even, like I said, if there's a body cam or any type of video, it doesn't matter. That officer is getting off. So you know what we need to do, y'all? Is only other thing that I can think of is just accept it. Is it's going to be one of our kids mowed down somewhere in the country, probably every day, every week, every month, every year. Because that's who America is, you know? Like I did said in another video, from the moment we stepped foot on this continent, we have had a target on our back. And nothing's changed, y'all. Nothing's changed. And and when I do these type of videos, which I hate doing, you know, there's a a sound of cynicism in my voice and and despair because I understand that it is what it is. I've been myself pulled over and had a really just y'all terrifying experience with the police. And I had my eight month old baby in the back seat. I don't know if I told that story before and um, maybe I'll tell it in another video. Well, let me see if I can just tell it quickly. So, um, I was young, about the age my son is now, 32 or so. We only had one car at that time. So I picked my daughter up from daycare, and I was going to pick up my, my ex from work. And um, he was really tired. So he said, Rachel, you know, you drive home because I don't want to fall asleep at the wheel. Now, in the back seat, we had my eight-month-old, and we were going to go pick up my seven-year-old from daycare. So I'm driving down the street. Um, I get to an intersection. Now, in the traffic coming towards me, there is a sign that says no left turn. And the reason why is because right on that corner, there is a police station. So I'm driving along. The light is green. I um, go on through the light. Now, right as I go on through the light, a police officer is trying to make an illegal left turn there and I almost hit him okay now he jumps out the car and he runs over banged on my window yelling and screaming um, telling me that I ran a red light now what happened when we stopped is it caused other cars to stop so they were running rolling down their windows trying to hear what was happening so when the police officer was yelling and screaming at me that I ran a red light the people that were stopped all around us because it had caused chaos. So it was a bunch of cars just piled up right there. They were yelling out the window. No, the light was green. We all were riding. You made an illegal left turn. So by this time, because there was so much commotion, my ex had, you know, laid his seat back and he had fallen asleep and he woke up and an officer was like, roll down the window. And he was cursing at me. And, um, my ex set up in his seat and he said Rachelle just roll it down a little bit because this officer is you know something is wrong here so I rolled it down the crack and he was like give me your effing license it's just going off so I put my license through the window you know told him I had insurance gave him all that he's still yelling and screaming um th told me to get out the car so my baby at this point started screaming and it, so it was all manner of confusion. So my ex was sitting on the driver's side. He was talking to me. He was saying, do not get out the car. By this time, I had started crying. And the officer could see that I was listening to what my ex was saying. So he goes around the side of the window and he was um, asking him, what are you saying? What are you saying? Screaming at him. And he was like, open the fucking door. And that, and he was yelling this at my ex, who was a passenger in the car. So my ex did nothing. He put his hands on the dashboard and he just looked straight ahead. He told him, I am the passenger. I am not driving, officer. So then by this time, the officer comes back around to the, to the other side of the car. 
but when he makes it to my window, he has his gun pulled. Now think about what I just said, y'all. I got an eight-month-old in the back seat, in a car seat, screaming her brains out. I got my ex on the other side, holding my hand, telling me, you know, Rachelle, just be calm. Keep your hand, hands on the steering wheel. He was like, I don't know how we're going to get out of this. This is bad. Oh, my God. So this officer, by the time he makes it to my window, he is pointing the gun at me, telling me to get the fuck out the car don't make him and then he cut off there now by this time we're all i think my ex probably is even crying because we don't know how we're going to get out of this we don't know how this is going to play out this is terrible now y'all this happened 20 my daughter will be 23 this year so about 22 years ago so we didn't have cameras and all video and phones and all this stuff where we could video what was going on so we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if he's going to shoot us. We don't know. We're terrified. My ex is holding my hand. He was just telling me he had his other hand on the, on the dashboard, you know, keeping him in plain sight. So by this time, another police car pulls up and we think, okay, this is it, y'all. We, we're not going to make it out of here. This is, this is gone bad because this officer is banging on his window with his gun, y'all. So these other officers walk up and it was two black officers, okay? So they come up to him, you know, he starts talking to them. So when they're talking, one of the officers walks over to us, baby screaming in the back, I'm crying, my ex is terrified holding my hand. You know, we don't know what to do. So the officer says, roll down the window a little bit so I can talk to you. And he just knelt down in the car you know, I roll it down halfway because I figure, okay, maybe this is a black officer. He will listen to us at least. So I roll down the window just a little bit more, still scared now because I don't know, you know, if he's trying to set me up to get out the car and they beat us or something. So I roll down the window. I'm crying. I'm crying so hard that it's hard for me to even talk. So I, I the, the black officer tells me to take a deep breath. You know, take a deep breath, ma'am. He was like, I'm, I don't mean you any harm. I just want to know what's going on. So I proceed to tell him what happened that this officer may, was making an illegal left turn. I told him I was driving alone. And because I didn't know that he was going to make that left turn, which I knew was illegal because their police station was right on the corner, you know, I had to swerve to keep from hitting him. And then when he jumped out, he alleged that I ran a red light. And, you know, almost hit him. And I told him, I said, because a couple of the cars that had stopped when all of this happened were still there. You know, these people were looky-loos. They wanted to see how this was going to play out. So even though they didn't get out their cars, they could see that I was explaining to the other officer. So they started yelling out the window. She did not run a red light. That officer was trying to make an illegal left turn there. Everybody knows. Everybody in Cleveland knows that you can't turn left on that corner because your police station is there so this officer he listened to my story and he told me hold on hold tight it's gonna be okay so i roll back up the window a little bit because i was still scared he walks back over to the other officer he starts talking he um the white officer is still yelling and screaming and all this and they just they stood there and talked to him for a second then the other officer that had been talking to the police officer, the other black officer, walks to the car. And he said, ma'am, this is what we're going to do. We want you to go ahead and drive off. And I was like, my ex was like, what? You want us to drive off? He said, yeah, just go ahead and pull off. So we were scared to pull off. We, we didn't know what was going to happen. So I kind of hesitated and I said, are you sure? I said, you know... He has my driver's license. He has my insurance. He said, hold on. He walked back to the white officer. He got my license and he got my insurance. Now, when he did that, the black other black officer was getting in his police car. The second black officer walked back up to my car, slipped my license and um, insurance through the window. And he said, um, I want you to drive off slowly. 
and we're going to follow you. And I said, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So he said, wait till I get in the car and then I want you to drive off. So he, you know, I said, okay. So what I did is um, I drove, started pulling off real slowly. I had to go around the police car with the black officers in it. So when I went around them, I just, I didn't even put my foot on the gas, y'all. I let the car kind of, child, I was probably going 15 miles an hour. An hour. So, uh, you know, the, the black officers pulled off and they started following me. And they had their police light just blinking, but no sound. And they followed me. And they followed me for a few miles, y'all. So eventually what happened is I got to a red light and this was after several miles and the black police officers put their siren on. And I remember my ex saying, okay, this is it because they pulled alongside of us. So he was like, oh my God, Rachelle. He was like, um, uh, if you know, he was trying to tell me if they pull out their guns, how to duck and hope we make it out of it telling me he loves me and you know all of this stuff y'all even when I talk about this it hurts my soul so the black police officers pull up alongside of us and um you know they got the street blocked off almost and so they tell us motion for me to roll down my window and I rolled down my window and what they told me is this they said um we believed you you know it's obvious that you know that officer ran the red light they apologized um, and, you know, told us that they were sorry that, you know, he had treated us the way he did. Um, the one that was on the passenger side, he said, ma'am, I'm going to step out of my car. I wanted to tell you that I'm going to step out of my car before I step out so you're not afraid. He said, I'm going to give you a car, one of our cars, and if you have any problems, you know, I want you to, to get in touch with you know, us, these two officers, you know, he said, um, basically he was telling us he was going to protect us. If something came of this because the officer had our information that they wanted to give us their business cards so they could help us if something came of it. He just walked up to the car. I rolled down the window then because I could tell that he was okay. He was smiling. He was telling me it was going to be okay. He was asking me if my baby was okay. He leaned down in the window and he asked my, my guy if he was okay. And just being very nice. And he told us, now we're not going to follow you anymore after this. We wanted to make sure that you made it out of that suburb safely. Did y'all hear what I just said? Out of that suburb safely. You know, I guess he thought maybe that other officer would call some of his buddies or something to get us hemmed up on the street and maybe, you know, open fire on the car or something. So I appreciated what those officers did. Now, the reason why I wanted to tell my story is to show you that we could be in the right and still lose our lives. You know, all of us have a police officer involved story that we could tell you. We're not lying, you know? This happened to me 22 years ago, and I will never forget the fear that I felt when that officer put the gun on the window and threatened to blow my fucking brains out if I didn't get out the car. He threatened to kill me. Now think about it. His accusation was that I had run the red light, so I deserved to die because he alleged that I ran a red light, which I didn't. He made an illegal left turn, which caused me to almost hit him. So right there on the street, this officer was planning to be judge, ju jury, and executioner. He would have killed me, my guy, and my eight-month-old baby right there in the middle of that intersection. I don't know what would have happened if those black officers wouldn't have came upon this scene. I don't know. And I don't even want to 
think about it. Maybe I wouldn't be sitting here today. My daughter wouldn't have made it to to be 22 year, years old and in college. We wouldn't have been here today, you know? So I just want to say that all of us are not bad, you know? And we know that people, it's that perception that they have of us that's making them shoot first and ask questions later. You know, I don't want to be cynical. I don't want to think that America is just rotten to the core, but, you know, with the history that I've had with the police and, you know, discrimination against me, I'm talking from personal experience. You know, I can't help but to think that this nation is rotten to the core, that this nation hates the skin, this chocolate skin that I'm dipped in, and my brothers and sisters who are black are dipped in. They hate us. That's just the bottom line, y'all. And I don't think this is ever going to change, at least not in my lifetime. Now, I don't know if my children will live to see a time when there is no more racism in America. I don't know if they'll live to see a time. I would pray that they did and that my grandchildren live in a world where there is no hatred. But if I sit here and be honest with myself, I don't think that will ever happen. Y'all, this is the end of my video. I'd like y'all to weigh in on, um, you know, what I was talking about today. Tell me what you feel about all these um, police shootings and how these officers get off. If you have a personal story that you want to leave down in the comments, hit me with it, y'all. Because like I said, I read all of y'all comments and, you know, I answer back, you know, and that's it, y'all. See you in the next video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this one. And y'all take care and be safe out there, please. Love all of y'all. Bye-bye now.